Hello everyone. Welcome to the next training session of SAP FICU module. Today we will be continuing the month end activities which we have been doing in the last training session. Now moving on to the next month end activity is post adjustment entries with the transaction FB50. Now in this activity there are various adjustments are done related to that particular month end activity part. So in this the company or the organization review the financial entries or the financial results for that particular month and the adjustment entries are done with respect to them and even the accruals or the provisions are made for a particular month in the SAP system for which the adjustment has to be done or even if there is any kind of a missing information related to the financial informations those transactions are taken up as an adjustment entry. So that has to be done with the transaction code FB50 and that is something which you are very much aware of. So we will not be taking that in the SAP system that you can go through of your own. Now moving up to the next is the foreign currency revaluation. So foreign currency revaluation basically is uh, uh, what we have done in a couple of training sessions back where we studied about the whole foreign currency configuration steps, the transactions and then how the foreign currency revaluation is done. So the revaluation basically is done so as to know what is the gain or loss due to the foreign currency fluctuations to the organization. So that is what been done with the transaction code FAGL underscore FC underscore VAL. That is what we have done in couple of last uh, couple of training session back which you can revisit and you can review that whole so that it will give you a better idea and a better understanding. But still we will be doing in the SAP system. So right now we will be executing the transaction FAGL underscore FC underscore VAL so as to have a view how the foreign currency revaluation is done. We need to take the company code then we need to take the valuation key date that is 31st of October and now we need to take the valuation area on over here which we have missed out. So the valuation area will be ZZ which we have created. Now we can move up to the next that is open items and in open items we need to select the vendor part this for which we will be executing the valuation for foreign exchange. So now we would be selecting the vendor from the list of the vendors. So the vendor which we need to take is 4000001. Now the similar way you can do it for if you want to evaluate for GL you can select GL. If you want to evaluate for customer even you can select the customer. If you want to evaluate the foreign exchange for all the vendors you can select the vendors. So it's up to you how you want to process the foreign exchange valuation. But you need to take care that no GR IR account has to be taken in that. So you need to select the GL. You need to select the valuation vendor open item. Then the customer open items. And then once you have done this we can execute this report for the results. So once we execute this report now here you can see number of records are there which has been reflected on the screen and there are different currencies been involved INR, JPY that is Japanese currencies, there is Euro, there is even INR again. So there are number of different transactions which have been captured on your screen and you can even go to this uh, posting option over here which says that four documents are there which can be posted for foreign exchange revaluation. So this is how you would be doing it. Right now we cannot post it because this is not a month end activity but else we could have 
post it. So if you click onto this posting, it will show you the number of different posting on the screen. As you can see, the adjustments have been done, which will be posted to the ledger account. So once the FC is done, it gets reversed in the in the next month. So you can see on the 31st of October, if it will be, we will be doing the foreign exchange valuation on very first of the next month, it gets reversed because maybe the values which are there can get corrected in the very next month. So that is why these are the adjustments which have been done. So to create the valuation document, we need to go to create posting and that is what we did and then we move to this particular screen and if you execute without creating the posting tick this means that the program is run in the test mode so this is how you would be doing it you can see this screen that is it once this has been done then a batch has been created and you need to go and need to execute this batch that batch and once the batch has been processed your foreign exchange valuation will be done on the system. So now we are done with the first two activities as of today in the training part. The first is the post adjustment entries then the foreign currency devaluation. Now we'll be moving ahead to the next is the interest calculation. So again interest calculation uh, we have done earlier with all the configuration steps and the processes but right now we'll only discuss about how the interest calculation is done. So for calculating interest in the SCP system, there is a special report or the transaction that is F.52 by which uh, the interest is calculated. But prior to this, whatever the different activities are involved for interest calculation, like the interest calculation type has to be created that has to be assigned with the master GL master or even the interest can be calculated for the GL as well as for the customer accounts so for all those details you can revisit the previous training sessions of interest calculation so right now we'll be executing the transaction f.52 so as to have a look how the interest calculation is done in the SAP system so the transaction code for that is F.52 enter so on the screen over here we need to take the chart of account first then the company code and then moving down we have to take the calculation period so the calculation period over here is the period for which the interest will be calculated so over here the period will be 0, 01 one ten two zero one four that is October first two thousand fourteen till the end of the month that is thirty first October two thousand fourteen and even if you want you can put the business area over here as well that is two zero one four was this the business area or okay or you can leave that particular part as a blank over here as well you can take the currency over here as well that is USD and suppose if you have number of different interest calculation indicators like in a practical example in a practical scenarios there are different interest indicators for 10 percent because they are they have different balances on which the interest has to be calculated and many of them have different rate of interest so certain will be having 5 percent some of them will be having 8 percent some are having 12 percent or 10 percent as well so in a practical scenario there are number of different interest calculation indicators defined and which particular loan or which particular GL account will be applicable for which interest indicator accordingly the interest are calculated on that so we need to take the GL account over here as well for which GL we want the interest to be calculated so we need to go over here to the GL account and we can select the GL account as well over here so now I want to calculate the interest on the balance on the particular GL that is loan from Citibank so I have selected the GL over here as well and now I want to calculate the interest for the period of October so I took the date of the calculation period from 1st of October to 31st of October I have taken the currency over here now 
few things more you have to take you have to, we have taken the chart of account assign the GL number which for which GL account for which we want the interest calculations to be done then we have taken the company code we have assigned the period for which the interest calculation has to be done that is the 10th period or uh, you can see the October month then we have assigned the currency over here now we can move down further on the screen over here and in this we need to assign the output control so that we can get a relevant output of the calculation so for that we need to select this first option and the second one that is a standard interest calculation and additional balance line so that the system will show you everything related to the interest calculation the rate of interest the indicator what is the interest amount what is the balance amount and all then the next thing we have to take is the posting control in this we need to select all these three parts one is posting interest settlement then posting also with value date in the past then update master data over here and another thing is the session name should not be changed it will always remain the same so requested not to change this else the system will give you errors while calculating the interest so these are the all details which you have to fill on your GL account interest scale that is the interest calculation run as well can be said so now we can execute this report over here and once we execute now the system gives you no list generated so the system is not able to find any GL where the indicator which we have created that is 20 has been assigned to so now what we need to do is we need to go back again and we move on to the same screen now we want to calculate the interest on this GL that is the loan from Citibank GL account so what we have to do is we need to go to the GL master account first so to went to the GL master we need to go to FS00 enter so in this we need to first check in the GL master that did we have assigned any interest indicator in this GL account or not so you can see over here in the tab create bank interest over here there is an indicator of interest so interest indicator they, they, it is particularly blank over here on the screen so first we need to assign an indicator over here and whichever indicator will be assigned on this particular field only that on the basis of that indicator the interest will be calculated onto this GL so we need to make it a change control and then we can assign the interest indicator over here that is 20 and over here we need to take the interest calculation frequency as well so that you can check with the F4 key and that will be one month so every month the interest will be calculated so whatever the frequency you assign it over here accordingly the interest will be calculated later on so you need to assign the interest indicator so interest indicator is the one which decide that what will be the percentage of interest rate which will be applicable onto this GL account on the loan balance so the 20% indicator which we have customized have the interest rate of 12% so we can save it now so once we have saved this part now we can go back again to our calculation of interest report and now we can execute this report for the month of October and we can see now what the report shows so we can execute this and now you can see that the calculation has been reflected on your screen so you can see the details over here here is the company code the interest indicator is reflected to you that is 20 your account number that is the GL account number has been reflected that is the description of the GL is loan from city and the calculation period has also been reflected over here that is 1st of October till 31st of October that is for the month of October now coming down over here you can see the value date then the document number which has been created on the screen and the posting date has also been maintained and the amount which is outstanding is fifty thousand dollars has been shown on your screen and then the interest which has been calculated is 12% you can see now 
and the interest amount which comes out is 4000 sorry 493.15 dollars so 493 dollars and 15 cent and now if you come down the closing balance is 50 thousand dollars and the interest rate is 12 percent and the interest amount is 493.15 and the total closing balance of the GL that is 200022 that is loan from Citibank is now $50,493.15. So the interest has again been reflected to you as a separate part and even it shows you the name of the company and the company belongs to Texas as maintained. So this is your interest calculation part as reflected onto your screen. So now the screen which you are just been having on the system is the preview of the interest calculation. But yet this particular interest has not yet been posted into the SAP system. So if you found that the interest which has been calculated on the screen and the interest has been calculated for the days that is 30 days on the screen is correct and fine then you can do one thing to post a transaction now you need to go to the on the menu part over here to the system and in this you need to go to the services and in services you need to go to the batch input and in batch input you need to go to the session so as to have your own batch and that batch has to be executed then only this particular interest calculation will be posted into the system and a document number an accounting document number will also be generated for the accounting reference so now click on the session so you can see over here there are number of uh, sessions have been created but the latest one belongs to the one which we need to execute so once you have selected this batch over here we need to go to the process and then we need to select this display error only and now we can process the batch over here so once we select on the process now your interest will be processed in the system and your document will be posted on the system as well so once I click on to the process now it asks you the business area on the line item 1 so that is what you need to assign over here so you need to assign the business over here business area so the business area was not been taken that's why the system is giving error with respect to the business area so we have taken the business area now and now we can enter on the screen okay it asks you the account assignment model as well so the account assignment model is not needed to be filled we can move back and now we can go on to process so you can see the document number has been over here the preview has been generated to you on the screen over here and the document which will be posted is interest allowed will be debited with the interest GL and your loan GL will be credited with the interest amount and once we move on to this save option over here the interest will save uh, the document will be saved and your interest will be charged onto the loan account so now your batch input has been completed over here so we can exit the batch input so moving up to the next month end activity that is capitalizes capitalizing the AUC assets if any for that particular month so in this particular activity in case there is any kind of an asset which is asset under construction which have got completed in the particular month those particular assets has to be transferred or has to be settled within the respective asset class so that the asset can be put to use and the depreciation can be put on to that particular asset so we'll be moving up to the how to capitalize the AUC assets with the transactions AIAB and AIBU so let's see in the SAP screen how this can be done enter so you can see on the screen now that 
the AUC, the company code you have to take over here and then you have to select the asset over here. Now the asset over here will be the asset number to be settled. To be settled means typically this will be an asset under construction part of asset. So the asset which I want to transfer, I want to settle to a final asset, that particular asset has to be taken up over here. So we can go for search that particular asset. So this will be a part of AUC asset. So I will be taking the AUC asset from over here that is CWIP building. So I have selected that. So once you have taken the company code and the asset over here, now you can move on to enter the screen over here or you can enter on the screen as well. So once you enter on the screen, it takes you to the next. The next you can do is you can execute on the screen as well. So after entering the screen, you can execute the screen over here and now it will take you to the next screen. So you can see over here that it shows you the line item list. We are going for a line item settlement. That is why it will show you all the line items. So they are as of now, there are two line items. Even if you want, you can cross check with the asset explorer AW01N enter. So the asset over here has, you can see over here has two line items, one of $40,000, another of $50,000. As a whole, it makes of $90,000 of CWIP building. So we can move over here now. And so in case you want to settle both the line items, you can select both the line item with the control on the keyboard. So both the line item has been selected. Now if I want to settle this first I need to once I have selected this both the line item I need to go to this enter distribution rule over here. Now one thing has to be clear with you that you can settle the whole asset as a whole as a hundred percent to the final asset or if you want you can even settle one of the line item of it as well. So suppose I want only the one of the line item to be settled. Suppose I want the second line item to be settled with the final asset. I want the first line item is still to be there because the part is still under construction. So I can take this second line item and I can move to this clear option over here. Enter distribution rule and click on to this. So once I click it takes you to the next screen over here you need to put the description so in description you can write it over here as settlement rule for building and you can decide the settlement profile so you can select the settlement profile also so from over here you can select the settlement profile the settlement profile over here will be settlement asset under construction. You cannot take any of them. You need to take which is relevant. So you need to select the AI that is asset under settlement. Sorry, settlement asset under construction. So that is what I have selected as a profile over here. The next you need to take is the asset value date. So the asset value date which I would be taking is August 31st. 2014. So once I have taken this, now I can move on to enter. Okay, you can go over here, overview. So once you click on to the overview, it takes you again to a next page or next screen. Now, this is an important screen to understand. Over here, this is the asset for which we are defining the settlement rule. So first over here in the category part, you need to select from the selection options that is FXA has to be selected as an asset and then second column settlement receiver so settlement receiver basically means the asset in which the value will be received so over here we'll be taking the asset which just defined or created where the value will finally go to or will be transferred to 
and the asset which we just created was building CA so we can double click on it and we can take that particular asset over here and now we can put over here as 100 percent enter so you can see over here the detail the category related to his asset and the settlement receiver over here is so we have taken the category then the settlement receiver basically means the final asset to which the value will get transferred to and then the percentage that means how much percentage value you want to transfer from the AUC asset line item so I want the whole line item to be transferred as a hundred percent so once you have done this now we can move to so now we can move back with the back option once so once we move back now you can see over here the second line item which we selected for the settlement rule has turned from red to green if you take care of that so once you do you can take care that this particular line item will change from red to green that means the line item has been defined with the settlement rule so once that has been done now we can save the screen <coughs> sorry we can move and we can save the screen over here so you can see the message is generated that the distribution rule is saved so this was just we have created the distribution rule so that the settlement can go so the distribution rule is that 100% of this particular line item that is the second line item will be settled with the final asset that we have taken up in the receiver part so once we have defined this particular distribution rule that is what we are we are done with the settlement rule over here now we'll move to the next step that is AUC settlement so under the AUC settlement now we will be doing the settlement of the asset finally so this AUC settlement functionality is an asset can be once the distribution rule has been defined that particular asset can be settled over here so we'll we'll settle this asset over here with the line item settlement as the rule has already been defined so we'll move to the screen on the SAP with the transaction AIBU enter so once we enter the screen over here now we need to select the company code over here and then the asset over here so the asset which we will be transferring will be taken up over here so this is the number which the asset AUC number which will be transferred so over here we'll be selecting the AUC asset whose settlement has to be done with the final asset so we have selected this asset over here now now we'll be selecting the document date so I am transferring or making the settlement of the asset on August 8th sorry 31st of August so that is what I have taken up and if you want you can take the text over here as CWIP building capitalized you can take the document type that is a B in this in the assignment part you can fill certain detail if you want to want, fill it anything so suppose I am putting it up over here as 100% settlement and in reference if you want to give anything you can give that as well so once I have filled all the details over here now I can I can run this in a test run part so as to check that there should not be any kind of an error in it so we can move on after this to this simulate option over here which you can see over on this particular header over here on the part so we'll simulate over here click on to the simulate so it says you the allocation profile not maintained yet so to come out with this particular error we have not assigned the allocation profile yet with the company code so we need to assign the allocation profile so we need to go to the transaction O A A Z enter so you can see on the screen 
the heading change view FIAA settlement profile so we are in the company code 1010 for which we are executing the AUC settlement we have not yet assigned the profile to the company code so we need to assign the profile we need to go to this field over here and we can select the options and out of that we can assign the profile so you can see over here AI that is settlement asset under construction so this is the profile which you have to select and this is a standard SAP defined profile provided so now we can move on and we can save the screen and the profile will be saved over here so once the profile has been saved now we can move up again to the screen and now we can go for a simulate the entry so now even there, though the error is there because it does happen that when you get the error and you have done the changes you need to go back and have to execute the transaction again so we have to execute the transaction now again so I would be going to AIBU enter so again you need to take the company code asset number over here the document date I would be taking up is August 31st and the asset value and the posting date will also be same we'll be taking the text over here the document type will be AA that is asset accounting you can take the assignment over here now we can execute this in the test run part so for ex for looking after to this as a test run part we need to go to the simulate option over here so you can see the simulate entry the entry has been simulated to you and this is the preview of the entry which will be done so you can see this AUC asset has been decreased by fifty thousand dollars that is the 75 posting key means credit the custom asset and 70 means debit asset so the value gets transferred from the AUC asset to the main asset so this is just a preview of it if you want this to be to be done so in that case we need to go back so you over here you just need to check the entry and you have to check that the debit and the credit is equal to zero and then we can move back to the main part again so this was the screen now when we have checked with the test run so now we'll take this test run off and then we can move to this execute option over here so once you execute this you will see that the document will get posted so you can see on the screen the document number have been generated over here and the entry has also been generated over here on the screen to you so this is how your settlement takes place so on the top over here you can see the asset number is reflected to you this was CWIP which got transferred and this particular asset got transferred to this asset that is building CA with the transaction type 346 and the asset over here is $50,000 so this is how the AUC settlement takes place in the SAP system and now if you want you can move back and check the asset explorer so as to have a look at the values of these both the assets so first let's move and check the first asset that is CWIP so we can move over here to the CWIP and we can refresh this option over here and you will change that it is right now is 90,000 and over here these are the two transactions once we refresh these values get will get changed so once I have refreshed this now you can see over here so you can see now that the value has moved from ninety thousand dollars to forty thousand dollars why because the third line item has been created that is the asset has been transferred or you can say the, A the AUC settlement have taken place so this 345 transaction type is retirement transfer of current year acquisition AUC line item so this is line item settlement for current year acquisitions similarly if you want to check with the second asset the asset which we we transfer to over here is this and this is the receiver over here so you can even check with this particular asset as well so the second asset over here is this one so you can see in this also that the value have been 
updated thus now on 8th august 31st 2014 and over here now the value has been updated on the screen as well moving to the next is the depreciation run depreciation run which is done as a month end activity or a period end activity part on which the depreciation is to be calculated for all the different assets fixed assets which are used within the organizations every assets are been assigned a depreciation key that is the percentage on which the depreciation has to be calculated so every asset class or even the every assets can have a different percentages even that can be assigned at the asset class level or a separately at the asset master as well so let's see how the depreciation run is done in this system a f a b enter so if you remember we have customized a document type and we left that as a standard document that is document type AF so in the customization we define the document type AF in the customization for posting of the depreciation amount in the customization customizing definition of the document type the number range are even assigned and that for that particular number the document depreciation document gets posted for the depreciation area in the system so that number has to be assigned so that a document can be posted and that we have already assigned in the system you can define the depreciation posting cycle by specifying the length of time in posting period between two posting runs the system is set in such a way that the posting depreciation is posted monthly you cannot run the depreciation on a day-to-day -day basis or weekly or fortnightly the max the minimum it can be done is it can be posted on a monthly basis you do not have a strictly uh, to keep strictly to this posting cycle you can also choose an unplanned depreciation posting run using an indicator on the initial screen of the depreciation as you can see over here unplanned posting run when you set this indicator you can skip over several periods and post the total depreciation for all of the skip periods in one period so suppose you have not executed any of the depreciations for the previous months and now after a couple of months you want the total depreciation to be executed in that particular period in that case all the depreciation of the previous year which are previous periods which have not been calculated will get posted into that particular post that particular period if it has been run in an unplanned posting run because there is no planning in it the system supports two different procedures for distributing the forecasted depreciation over the posting run the difference between these two procedures becomes evident when you process acquisitions within the fiscal year or handle post capitalization so we'll execute the depreciation run over here as you can see on the screen that you need to select the company code then you need to take the fiscal year and then you need to take the posting period so the posting period you would be needing is suppose I take 01 and the next thing you need to take is plan posting run so normally always a plan posting run should be executed and then you can select over here list assets so you can see over here there are certain more options in this repeat start and planned so each and of every of them has a different purpose the plan posting run you can post to the next period that is specified according to the posting cycle during a regular posting run of this kind the system does not allow you to limit the run to particular asset so you, in a plan posting run you cannot execute for one particular asset once the depreciation run will be done it will be done for all the assets in the company code next is the repeat run you can request a repeat posting run for the last period posted you might need to carry out a repeat run if the depreciation terms were changed 
for individual asset in connection with the year end closing. Now this, this particular repeat run happens when suppose you have assigned a wrong depreciation key on any of the assets or maybe for multiple assets and later on you change the depreciation keys in their master in the asset masters and now you want that the correct the depreciation should get corrected so in that case you need to go to this repeat run process and once you repeat whatever the changes have been done in whichever assets the system pass a rectifying or a correcting entry for them so during a repeat run process the system only post the difference that resulted between the first posting run and the repeat run process so you can limit the run to a particular asset as well in case of a repeat run the next is a restart over here now if a posting run was terminated for maybe the technical reasons or changes have already been made to the database you have to restart the program in restart mode using the restart mode ensures that all the system activities that were interrupted by the terminations are repeated and an unplanned posting run if for whatever reason you want to skip all or one or more posting periods in that company code you can do this by specifying an unplanned posting run the system then creates posting of all the periods that were skipped as well as for the period entered the posting period that you specify however must fit into the posting cycle so the system calculates the depreciation for all the previous periods along with that particular period and it posts it in the same particular period in the system so an accumulated entry is done for all the previous depreciation in that particular period so moving on to execute the depreciation run you need to select the company code fiscal year and then the posting run and then you need to select over here the planned posting run so once you have done that you need to select the list assets over here and then mind it you always have to execute this depreciation run in the test run part first of all so as the new all the parameters have been selected over here on the screen list asset then test run now we can move on to execute the depreciation posting run in the test run part you can see now a pop-up screen come up to you and it asks you do you want to continue the proceeding anyhow you have to select yes so once it has been taken up it will give you the list of all the asset account with their depreciation which has will be posted so this is the planned amount and this is the amount which will be posted in the system and this is the whole different uh, this is the last depreciation amount which has been posted and the total accumulated becomes out to be this so this is how it gives you the test run and it shows that there is no error on the screen and we can go ahead without test run for executing the depreciation run into the system so once you have checked this you can we can go back and now we'll be taking up this test run off and now we can execute the depreciation run so whenever we execute the depreciation run depreciation run is always executed at the background not on the on the front so to execute this we need to go to the program on the top and in program we need to select the execute in background so once you click on to this execute now you can see a system it asks you the background print parameters so in the background print parameters you have to select the output device the output device that we can see the list of that so the output device over there which we will be using is LP01 LP01 is the standard SAP output device which is you will find in each and every client in any of the SAP system and that is what should be preferred to be taken up over here so once you have taken up over here the output device no need to change any other parameters just you need to move on to continue now so it will take you to the next screen now and over here 
Now the system asks you when you want to schedule your depreciation run. Whether you want to schedule your depreciation run posting immediately or you want it to be done at a particular date or time accordingly you can schedule your depreciation run job. So what I will be doing of ever right now is I will be posting the depreciation immediately. So I will click on to this immediate option and this is what is preferred in every company as a month end activity and once you have clicked on to this immediate you need to go down over here and you need to select the save option over here so once you save you can see a message has been generated over here the background job was scheduled for program RAP OST RA post 2000 so this is the program name which you must remember now we can go back and we can check this particular job the background job whether that has been processed has been in process or has been finished or not so to have a look at the job there is a different transaction code to move to have the status of the job the transaction code is SM37 now we can click on to the enter so this will take you to the next screen and this is basically a simple job selection screen where whatever the jobs which have been scheduled can be checked by this particular transaction code. So over here you need to take your user ID. You need to maintain your user ID or user name by which it has been processed. So one has been take when uh, once it has been the username has been taken up. Now we can move on and we can put the date from and to that for which date job you want to see the status of. And now we can move on to execute and we can execute this job over here. And you can see now that there are number of jobs which are scheduled over here on your screen. So the job which has been scheduled right now is the last one over here can see that so this is your job which we have scheduled just a while back and that has been finished right now so once it has been finished that means your depreciation run has been posted so once this been done now you can select this over here and you can move on to click on to this display spool list so once finished we can have this spool and this is pool will give you the list of different asset with their depreciation so once you get this you can go on to this type and you can click on to this ABAP list so as you click on to this part you will see the list of assets over here with the, the different depreciation which has been post, posted to the to the respective assets so you can see now the detail of the depreciation over here the date we have created for depreciation run is 2012 and the posting date is 30 11 2007 that is the the depreciation run has been executed on today that is 20th of December but the posting which has been taken place is for the seventh period if you remember we have executed this sorry for the eighth period and the posting date is 30 11 2014 you must know that the depreciation is always posted at the end of the month on that particular period to which period you are executing that depreciation run so you can see this is the depreciation posting run for the company code 1000 and even you can see now the asset number over here the account determination the different business area if applicable and the cost centers have also been assigned over here and the profit center is also the name of the asset has been described over here and then if you move ahead on the right side of it you will see even the amount of assets which has been posted so you can see the plant amount this plant amount is the amount which is reflected to you in your asset explorer and this is the actual amount which has been posted as a part of depreciation so and at the end you will find the cumulative posted amount that is the cumulated depreciation amount over here so this is your your status report which you get from this pool over here 
and which you have got it right now. So this is how the depreciation run can be executed in the SAP system for the company code and you can revisit the depreciation run in detail as well with uh, with the asset accounting part where we have uh, covered the depreciation run as well for a detailed understanding of the depreciation run part now moving on to the next is activity is displaying the document journal the document journal is created once every month and contains all the document postings for a particular posting period it is printed on a paper with an official notarial stamp the document journal contains the most important data from the document header and the document items so to execute this particular activity open item document have to be posted in the system for that particular month for posting run the processes in the GL account scenario in the account receivable and the accounts payable scenarios using the master data from these documents so let's see how this report can be executed so the report over here is s underscore alr underscore 87012287 so to execute the report let's move on to the SAP system so I have taken the report as you can see s underscore alr underscore 87012287 enter now we need to take the company code for the particular document journal for that particular company for which we want to look for then we need to take the fiscal year 2014 and now we can put the posting date that is from which date to which date for that particular month you want to have the document journal for example suppose I want to have the document journal for this particular month that is December 1st till 31st December so we can have that report over here how many documents have been posted into the system okay uh, probably the okay first the date format is slightly different so moving on okay the system gives a warning message to you that you should select the document date as 1-1-2014 so let's have the document date as 1-1-2014 till date you can take the documents print over here onto the system so you need to select the test run over here first and then you have to select the output selection and moving down page down we need to select the line item we need to select the line item over here so once we have taken this now we can execute this report so this report which we will be executing will be in the test run part the system only generates a log the data is neither updated nor changed in the database because it has been executed in a test mode part so now we can execute this so once we have executed you can see on the screen it contains all the informations related to that particular documents so it is a journal kind of a thing where different document number are there respectively and these can be taken as a print as a document journal part so now if you want this to be taken as a as a for the print we have to take this test run off that is we have to deactivate the test run so once this has been deactivated the system updates the data into that database so now we can go and we can execute this report again enter so you can see now the detail is on your screen again so this contains the whole list of documents which have been posted in between 
the document date 1-1-2014 till December 31st, 2014 for the whole 2014 calendar year. So this is a list is carried on the basis of the parameter entered in the selection screen. You can choose between different levels of details and summarization levels. The number items consecutively or the output alternative account number can also be assigned and changed. So if you want you can go back again and you can explore this report further with the, taking this line item as a total seat only item. So there are different options which you can explore over here on the options are there. These are different options. So you can execute one of them each and every one will give you some of the other different details to you. Enter. So you can see this is the summarization detail now because I have clicked on to the summarization part. So this gives you only the summarization of the of uh, the ledgers. Similarly you can go back again and now you can take instead of total line item you can just keep it on the line item and this way you can have different reports. You can have business area wise summarization or even document summarization can also be taken over here. So you can see over here. So these every every options you will give some of the other things as a different information. So you can explore this particular document journal report more exclusively for having different details and informations from the report on different levels of details and summation levels as you will take on this. So this is the next part of the activity where at the month end all the documents which have been posted into the system for that particular period are taken prints for records and for legal purposes for as per the accounting policies so as to keep the records of those documents in a different filing. So that is it for this particular activity moving back and now we can move to the next activity that is financial statements. So once we have done all the closing activities for the month end, now the thing is how your financial statements will be reflected to you for that particular period and till that particular period as well. So the report in this case creates the balance sheet and profit and loss statement for a user defined reporting period within a fiscal year with absolute and relative comparison for a comparative period as well. With this report you can create as many balance sheets and profit and loss statements as required based on different grouping principles which you have defined into the in your company code. You determined how the balance sheet and the profit and loss are created using the financial statement versions that we have already covered in the earlier sessions as well. So for more on the financial statement versions you can go back and you can you can go through that particular uh, training manual which we training session which we have gone through how we create the financial statement version and how you design your balance sheet and profit and loss our accounts to be reflected. So moving on now is meanwhile there are two possibilities now to show the financial statements as you can see there are two reports on your screen one and the second one on this side. So the first one shows you the financial statement with old report that is the older report that is s underscore lr underscore 870 this is the older report whereas there is a new report by SAP that is s underscore pl 0 underscore 86 so the second report is more important in today's context because this gives you much more details compared to what the older report gives it to you so we'll be executing both the report and see what are the differences in those reports are. So let's take the first report as a first part for the financial statement. So moving on to the SAP system now enter. So we can take the chart of account here and we can take the company code. Now we can take the first financial statement version over here if we have created any.
So the parameters we have taken up in the report is you need to select the company code and then you need to select your finance list statement version which you have created for your own company code. Then you need to select the reporting year that is the fiscal year and the reporting period which for which you want to have the financial statement that is the profit and loss account and the balance sheet. You can change the period even if you want you can you can have a look for one to one period that is 0 1 to 0 1 and if you want you can check for the whole quarter that is one period one to period three. So every possibilities are there you can have the report as per six months that is semi annually by changing the periods and even you can run it for the whole year as well. So let's execute this just for the first six months and then moving on to the comparison year you can put the comparison year so as to compare your reports with the last fiscal year's report as well. After doing this you need to go down page down and then you need to select the ALV grid control and you can select this as a structured balance sheet and then we can move and we can execute this report. So once we have executed this particular report you can see the details there are different headings and within the headings there are different balances been reflected. The property, plant and equipment have land, building, asset under construction whose total values are given to you for the period and in the last year there is no value as you can see on over here and the absolute differences are reflected to you over here in the screen. So this gives you the total assets. Similarly you can move up to the liabilities. Liabilities have their own headings. So intercompany payables Intercompany payables have again the trade payables, intercompany payables, total and these. So similarly you can create your own version and you can have your reports over here. So the more and more transactions will be there for in the company code this particular balance it will, will show you every detail and every figures as required. Even you can find the profit and loss account for the current year in this columns. But right now there is nothing being calculated because these are done at the year end activity part. So this was the old report which uh, we have executed. You can see over here S underscore LR underscore 8701284. So now moving on to the new report and we'll see what are the different changes between this and that report. The new report is much more dynamic as compared to that particular old report. The new report fulfills a lot of requirements of the organization. So as you can have your balance it not only at the company code level but you can have your financial statements on different levels, different parameters. So the report is here S underscore PL0 underscore 86000028 enter. So now executing this report you can see over here you have to take the company currency type so that you can select from the over here on the options. So we'll be taking the first one that is the document currency. Second you need to take the company code. Now the third thing which you need to take is on which parameters you want your financial statements. Whether you want to have a look of your financial statements at the business area level or at the functional area or at the cost center level you want your profit your financial statements as per the profit center on what basis on what parameters you want your financial statements to be displayed to you so all those options are there with you in this so and that is what the current requirement of the organizations because the organization works and it has different profit centers for different business units or for different products and they want to have their financial statements on for their respective area or for respective plant or product or maybe for operation or maybe the reason. So how you distinguish those parts and accordingly you can have the reports from this particular report over here even you can have the segment wise reporting also available with you. So this gives you a lot more exclusive reporting for your analysis for the for the company's understanding analysis looking after the progress of the of the particular product or particular area or particular business or operation and they can decide a lot of things on the basis of these reports. 
so you need to take the again FIS annual representative structure you need to select over here and the structure will be same that is the financial statement version which you have created so you need to select the financial statement version over here I am taking this but you need to create your own which we have discussed in in the previous uh, training sessions how to do that you need to select the leading ledger so on the leading ledger also on ledger that is leading ledger we have talked about so you need to select the leading ledger over here then we need to take the reporting year the reporting year is the fiscal year and the period for which you want to have the reporting or you want to have the reports or the financial statement suppose I want to have it for the whole year and I want to compare this report with the last year last fiscal year for the whole so this is what you need to select over here on the screen and then you need to select this classical drill down report so once you have this now we can move and execute the report so you can see the report over here on your screen you can expand the report reports over here with you these are the different as a sub as a assets subheadings balances details have been provided even if you want to have the further diverse bifurcations of these details you can execute it further and it will show you further amount that the bank has these much of a balance cross so similarly you can have your account balances details further in account balances you can have further details you can drop down and they will provide you the further details of every transactions so this is how the report has been generated if we go back and we execute those reports on different parameters even that can be done you can execute your report not only at the company code level but also at the profit center and the cost centers as well so with the help of this new report it is possible to create financial statements for specified profit center or segment using the same transactions so this is how your month end activity is to be done the month end activity consists these as a basic activities which should be done at any organizations there could be further more activities depending upon organization to organization but these are the standard activities which must be performed as a period end of the month end activity part so this is how we have covered we have covered all the month end activity in the last training session and in today's session in the next training session we'll be looking after how the year-end activity goes for an organization and year-end activities are somewhere different from that of the month-end activity because when a year ends the month-end activity has to be there because when a year ends a month also ends at that point of time so the month-end activity has to be carried at the same time the year-end activity has also to be carried on so we'll see that in the next training session you can go through these activities and perform it on your in your own company code in your own system and see how it works out to be all the best thank you